Hello everyone, this is RaySpace with an update for RP2000, which is a career mode for Real Solar System and Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. It is an alternate career mode from RP1, though it requires you to use a very specific version of Realism Overhaul, version 17.4.1, and that's because versions that are later uh, prohibit you from using uh, career mode other than RP1. There's supposed to be a way around that, but I tried that and it didn't work. So you have to use version 17.4.1. Uh, that probably won't hurt much because the engines that are in RP2000 are generic and configured by me. Uh, so the changes that they made in Realism Overhaul since version 17.4.1 probably aren't that big a deal, uh, hopefully. Uh, but yes, the point of RP2000 is for you to start up as a startup company uh, in the year 2000, not a government agency, and you're using more generic engines, not the famous engines that people already use, and so it's a little bit more freeform. And this update is to improve compatibility with USI, KSP Interstellar, and also Planetary Base Inc. or whatever it's technically called, Planetary Base Systems. Uh, planetary Base Inc. is what the folder is called, so that's why I always remember. And so more of those parts are configured for a Realism Overhaul now. That th Whether their proper Realism Overhaul is debatable because we're talking about KSP Interstellar, for instance. Uh, so the warp drive is MART compatible, but what do we do with that, really? I mean, I, I've left it be because we don't have any standards for it, really. I have drawn the line on certain things. I have not marked the EM drive compatible. Anything that has, like, no reasonable physical basis, I, I've left off. But uh, most, mostly everything is now marked happy. Uh, one thing I haven't gone through is the transmitted power. And so we've got a lot of parts like these wind turbines. Uh, that's that's one thing. And then uh, these microwave dish receivers. I've typed in non on the search field up there. And that's so that we can see all of the non-RO parts highlighted. And that's so that's what you've got highlighted here. It's, uh, well, at least highlighted in one of the colors is, in theory, the non-RO parts. So... Uh, but most of USI is marked. There are a few containers that I didn't know what to do with right now. A lot of them are marked work in progress. Uh, so that's because I need to review those containers. The wolf section I have not done because I don't really understand it yet. So I need to do some work on that. And also the atlas ones, which include these domes. I need to see about how to configure those. But Many, many things in USI are now configured and hopefully will work, but I need a lot of people to use RP2000 to playtest them. I don't have the time to playtest everything. I, I can't use every single one of these parts on my own, so I need help with that. I don't know why these two are not a non-RO. Uh, but the USI parts in particular are very finicky because they have a tank switch system that is different and not exactly compatible with modular fuel tank, not, comp cap not compatible at all with modular fuel tanks, actually. Uh, let's take a look at those to make sure that what I've done is correct. Uh, I need to go to a sandbox save. So yeah, uh, I've removed the work in progress stuff from the MKS parts and the Tundra parts. I've been using them enough that I'm satisfied that they do what they're supposed to do. But some of the USI parts are work in progress. This is a regular container. It says metallic ore, and it does in fact have metallic ore. And I just want to make sure that the switching works. This is why I haven't made them modular fuel tanks. It'd be easier to make a modular fuel tank that can contain all these things, like the polymers and the supplies. I can do that. I did that with the... Um, Penta propellant engine. I added a new kind of tank that contains other things that weren't there before. But if I do that, we won't have the texture switching. So that's why I haven't done that. The issue was that some of the parts had liquid fuel and oxidizer in, and I had to remove that. 
but I think the way I think the way I removed that has them broken. Oh, this one, the nodes are in the wrong place. Yeah, on this planetary hub as well. How annoying! Because the parts had to be rescaled to meet, meet uh, realism overhaul standards for scaling. These I had manually replaced their nodes before, but. Yeah, it's gonna take some effort to fix that for those. Okay, that's that. Next cargo. Okay, xenon gas. Oh, th I think this is the one I was trying to find. So these tanks originally had liquid fuel and oxidizer, and I had to remove those, and I think I've got it right. So I had to change how the textures work and also remove the liquid fuel and oxidizer or anything that's okay. Try this one. Uh, but yeah, nodes clearly need to be changed. Okay, yeah, all right. So some problems, but not as many problems as I was worried about. So uh, there'll probably be an update for the little nodes so that people can attach things properly. But for now, uh, the parts are showing up, they're properly scaled, they don't have liquid fuel and oxidizer or mod propellant in, um, and hopefully they work out. But more updates will be coming, and I'll update other things. So for now, it's just KSB Interstellar, USI, and Planetary Base Inc. The Wolf and Atlas parts for USI I haven't done yet, and that is the update. So with that, Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.